Well, howdy ho, my peeps. Yeah, I have been gone for a hot little minute, haven't I? A couple of weeks anyway. It's because I've been working on this project. This is a curtain panel. Um, when I do my update my that were of clips that I've been collecting over the past couple of weeks, you'll see my progress or process of making it. I have um, five of them here finished and pressed, ready for, let's see here, can't really see the window, but it's the window to the right of the screen. There are, um, there are three of those windows requiring six curtain panels. Um, I have been pretty much working on curtain panels exclusively for a week. Every time I come into the store, I'm working on these curtain panels. How, you say, can it take a week to finish six curtain panels? I mean, they aren't even drapery panels. They are cafe curtain panels. They're not even that long. Well, I'm going to lay this sucker out and show you why. Okay, so this is what it looks like laid out on the ironing board um, with these, you know, these gorgeous fabrics. I just love them. So take a look what I did down here. It is this pattern with this as a companion. Okay, so... Let me show you how these things actually got made. First, I sewed this to this, pressed it open. Then I sewed this panel to this panel, and it went down a little bit onto this thing. I just turned it in at the top to make a really simple hem at the top. All of this had to be pressed out, measured correctly, you know, uh, pulled into shape if it had been pulled out of shape. Um, it, it took a while to get it to, so that it would all lay properly. So then what I did is I um, pressed this thing open and the way I designed this, I designed it with like a self edging. So, so this piece here, the top piece, was wider than the bottom piece by maybe three inches, which gave me once I found the centers and pressed it all open, these beautiful little edges on either side of the curtain panel that will make it so, it just give it a little bit more heft on the edges and make it so that you don't see any of this liner when the curtains are closed or open for that matter. So, you know, that took extra time. Didn't need to do it, but I did. So once that, that part all got pressed open, it was time to take this section and you can see it's been turned at this point up. I had already pressed um, a quarter inch down. So basically what I had to do was find the center and start pressing and laying this piece in. Now, if any of you guys are used to sewing large pieces of fabric, you will um, understand just what a slippery slope it is when you're turning large pieces of fabric that ultimately need to lay flat, you kind of have to, like you can see, I had to sort of ease it in right here. And in some places it got eased here and that's so that it would end up exactly at these ends. Now, some of you more um, expert than I seamstresses will probably know special trips, tick, trip, ticks, ticks, Jesus, tips and tricks about how to make this work better than I did. Um, but as it turned out, this, this was functional. So I have a beautiful contrasting edge here. It comes up to the back. This is the part that will be seen uh, from the parking area. So there's a pretty liner. Okay, so all that was cool. Got that all done. Then it was time for the curtain rings. I'm going to lay these curtain rings out. Close your eyes. Don't get seasick while I move this camera around or phone around. Okay. Now, these curtain rods. Check out these curtain rods. Oh, for crying out loud. I don't mean curtain rod. I mean curtain ring. I am trying to do way too many things at once. There are 13 curtain rods on each of my six panels. Each curtain rod has to be sewn on by hand. No big deal, you say. Make a couple little loops, tie it off, you're done, right? No, not right, and here's why. The curtain rings 
need to live inside and down a little bit into this little channel here. So in order to do that, I had to, um, I had to sew them on in, in, a, in a weird way so that you couldn't see the stitching very well from the front. I knew you would see it from the back because I used a white, like a carpet thread to do this, but I'm just gonna touch that up with them green marker and you won't see the white thread not that anybody would see it anyway but i can get really really um ocd about things like this so i'm happy with the way these rings ended up i think they ended up um, looking very nice especially from the front all right let me tell you the story of these curtain rings i bought these curtain rings back in the night early 1990s from Pier 1 Imports, they're iron curtain rings that have been painted gold and then painted green, and then some of the green's been knocked off, so you can see see some of the gold coming on from underneath. Beautiful, right? They came um, a dozen to a package. I bought them at deep discount for 99 cents. 99 cent a package. Yes, I did. Um, that's obviously less than 10 cents a piece. Um, and I bought every single package they had. They had about, oh golly, I don't know, eight. I don't know how many, a lot of packages. I bought them all. And I tried to use them in my life from back then. Tried to make curtains with them, use them for this and that. And these dang things never quite worked. They were never quite the right curtain ring for whatever application I was trying to use. So I put them away knowing that someday, someday, my project would come. And it did. And here's the weird thing. Okay, so I've got all of these done. I still have a couple more panels to do. I counted out all my curtain rings. I had one curtain ring left over. Just one. So if you do the math, that'll tell you how many packages I had and how many I may have lost along the way. But I thought that was really kind of freaky. So these, uh, these curtain rings have found their forever home on my lovely and extremely time-consuming um, cafe curtain panels. Now, here's the other thing. Uh, with the exception of sewing these on by hand, the I use the machine for the whole thing, except hemming. So start, I started here and did a blind hem by hand all the way up, all the way across and down the other side. So get a close-up of that. That's what my blind hem looks like. And I did it like that by hand on purpose because I didn't want you to see any top stitching. I wanted it to be clean of top stitching. So how do you do that? Well, you just settle in for about a 10 episode binge of Outlander and you start sewing. And that's how that's how these panels all got hand sewn. So, there you go. This is this is my opus, my curtain opus. I'm done and I'm going to hang it up and you are now going to see the finished result. Okie dokie, here we go. I got them hung up. Um, I love these curtains. I think they turned out just beautifully. I still need to figure out some sort of a treatment across the top. I don't think I'm going to do a traditional valance. I think that I'm going to do something maybe like a, oh, I don't know, maybe a shelf across the top with something hanging from it. I'm just not really sure at this point. But I just, just love these. I think they turned out great. I'm going to show you one that's closed so you can get an idea of, of what they look like closed. I'm a sucker for floral, particularly roses. I think roses are just beautiful. And, um, you know, there's that part of me that sort of never grew out of the little girl bedroom with the Priscilla curtains and the, the floral bedding and all that kind of crap. So I'm gonna, 
I'm going to indulge that in my in my curtain choices. Um, I still have this main window to do, so I'm going to work on that today. You guys have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you later. I'll come up with another um, another update pretty quick. Bye bye.